Transferring Elevations Between Floors In this example, we're starting with a benchmark that's already been established on the second floor. We're using a penetration in the concrete created by pouring a 4-inch sleeve placed at the intersection of two grid lines. Along with transferring elevations, these sleeves can be used to project grid lines floor to floor using a plumb laser. More on that in another video. We'll be extending a 25-foot fiberglass rod from the benchmark on floor 2 through a sleeve directly above up onto floor 3. While our rodman makes his way up to the third floor, I'll get the level set up. Using body weight to secure the legs with the instrument plate roughly level, screw on the level, adjust my set screws until I'm level in one direction, tap, check level at 90, and I'm ready to observe. The rodman is now up on the third floor keeping the rod level, through the penetration down to the benchmark on floor two. I'll take my rod reading. Okay, let's visualize what's happened up to this point. We'll use the completed set of level notes and an active sketch to follow along. We started with a benchmark on floor two with a known elevation, and we're setting a benchmark on floor three. There's our start elevation on floor two and the elevation column of our three wire level notes. So we set up our level, extended the rod from floor two up onto floor three and took our backsight reading, 23.192. We added that to our start elevation and got our HI, or the temporary elevation, of the level itself at instrument center. Next, we brought the rod up through the penetration sleeve, collapsing each top section along the way, and then placing the bottom of the rod on the square ink benchmark we're creating on floor three. Holding the rod plumb, we're ready for our foresight reading. Okay, let's recap. We brought the shortened rod up to floor three and took a foresight reading from our previously set up level, 5.156. Subtracting the foresight from our HI gives us the new unverified elevation for our floor three benchmark. I say unverified because we still need to run our level loop back to the start point and double check our results. Next, I'm going to break my setup or kick a leg, whichever term you prefer, level back up, Tap, check 90, okay, I'm good. And I'm going to observe my next backsight coming up off of my unverified floor three benchmark. Looking at the sketch again, new setup, backsighting a short rod at the floor three benchmark, 5.102. I'll add that to my benchmark at three and obtain a new HI. We'll extend the rod back down through the sleeve, placing it squarely on the benchmark at two, and holding the rod plumb at its top up on floor three, I'm ready to take my closing foresight reading. Here's our sketch one last time. The rod has been extended down to the benchmark at two. I've taken my foresight reading, 23.137. I'm subtracting that from the HI for a closing elevation of 1598.122. My starting elevation was 1598.121, so my total misclosure is positive 0 0.001, one thousandth. Such a small number I don't even have to do any adjustments. That means I can now accept or verify my elevation at the floor 3 benchmark of 1616.157. And now that it's verified, I'll go ahead and write it permanently on the ground, just next to our inked floor 3 benchmark. Notice that the newly calculated benchmark at 3 and the design finish floor at 3 are not equal. The previously established benchmark at two and the design finish floor at two are not equal either. This highlights the importance of running a closed vertical level loop from floor to floor to establish real benchmarks, rather than simply assuming that any finished concrete slab has been poured exactly to its design height. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, and click that subscribe button for more.